Now we're going to add a camera. Well, the camera already exists because the camera is how the game renders, but we're going to make it so that the camera can follow the player around the game world. Currently, the game world is the same size as what we defined in our config where we said it's 800 by 600 in size. So what I want to do is I want to make a few changes here to adjust this. So to do that, I'm going to, um, I want to set the camera to have a much bigger space here. And when I do that, I'm just going to say this dot, what not comma, dot, this dot cameras dot main dot set bounds and the fingers are being very sloppy right now and I'm going to just double the size of my world so I'll go 1600 wide 1200 tall with it so now I've made the camera bigger with it and to add to that so that it becomes worthwhile to us what we're going to do is tell the camera to follow the player. So we say this dot camera dot main dot start follow this dot player. We have to add this on the player because we're referring to it within the context of this scene. So now when we save this, All right. Oh. Uh, forgot. Uh, it's cameras, not camera. So plural. Uh, it's not a bad idea. Is you can even set a variable to be a reference to the camera object so that. You don't have to write this.cameras.main each time. You could just have it uh, call your variable cam and it'd be this.cam. That can be a way to do it as well. And now what we can see if I move through is the player is centered on screen unless I have, you know, the, we're at the edge of the world here. So the player is centered. Now let's go wee. Okay. And we are confined because that is the physics world. So the camera is following and you see how that's kind of fun as the camera is now working with the player as it's following it around. So it stays on screen unless you know there's more screen to go visit. So that works out okay, but what we really need to do is we need to change the physics of our world so that we can go beyond that 800 by 600. So we want our physics the bounds for that. We'll set the width here equal to that same 1600. Oh, it's bounds, not bound. So bounds dot height. I'll make this one 1200. So now let's save this and see what happens in the world. So I click here. We're at the edge of the world. And whoa, falls down. Now you can see. I run to the edge, look at the velocity vector as it's running. It will get to the middle. Now I'm running across the screen. And then once there's only half the width left, then I can go all the way to the edge. So it's a pretty nice way of doing it. Having written my own code to do uh, in-game camera kind of thing with, through my own code, this is a much easier way of doing it. I just set the boundaries of the world. I tell the camera to follow the player. 
But when the player only has half the world left, then it goes up to the edges. And it, it's brilliant the way that this works. But what we do need to happen now is we need artwork to populate this to become more. What's there? So I'm going to take the sky that I've added here. Sky is static, so I don't have to reset its body, but I'm going to double its size. And then also change where, because remember, where origin point is the middle. So we put it in the middle, double the size. And when we do that, we'll see that the blue sky now occupies the whole scene. So now we have the blue sky occupying the whole scene. So that's good. What would be nice is to have a few more platforms going on here. And we can do that if I jumped over to Illustrator as a way to start laying out the platform. So the top left three are the original platforms we had and then I put some in and these aren't perfect yet because some of the jump distances aren't possible to achieve unless I change the acceleration or uh, velocity impulses based on the input command. So we either have to change those or move some of the things around. So what that requires is adding in another stack of platforms and where you put your platforms is going to be I've generated some platforms here based on the approximate locations as they appeared in my illustrator document to use that as a guide so you can figure out what platforms work best for you in your game oh wait gotta save it before jumping over so let's save that jump over and we can see we have some platforms. We do have a little problem going on, namely the ground is not where we want it. So we probably need to adjust the ground. And now I can see that. So I can't quite get there. And this is part of the figuring out your game world. And doing it in Illustrator is not necessarily the ideal place. Using a program like Tiled where we could then set up tiles uh, for artwork drawing those tiles. Oh, and now once I hit the bottom because the ground isn't here, I'm technically in the air. And if we go back into the up command, we'll see if I press the up key and I'm not touching down. Well, I'm not touching the platform. So as far as phaser is concerned, I'm in the air, which means I can't jump a second time. Uh, so as long as I'm here, I'm going to just give that uh, a little more jump to see if that works better with my scene, but it gets me pretty close to what I want. So we're making some pretty good progress here. We've adjusted the movement of the player. We've made it so that we have a larger world. We can follow it. I do need to now set the ground and give the ground a little better um, relationship or size option here. Now, the artwork is 400 pixels wide, so what I really need to do is boost it, scale it by four, and then the location that I'm going to put it as I scale it by four, because it, instead of changing the origin point of the artwork, if I change the origin point to say zero, zero, then I would draw this at zero and 11, 68, and then that would put it the 32 pixels off the ground as it is this should accomplish the same thing without having to also change the origin so let's jump down and see and there is the ground so now I can try and leave the ground once more my bigger impulse for jump looks like it might help we'll see if we can get back into the world oh missed my jump there See if there's enough, uh, yay, there's just enough jump to uh, accomplish that. And now with a little bit of slide, it makes some of those movements when we get to the edge a little bit more precarious because you feel like you're about to uh, go off the edge. So the placement of these platforms is working now that I have put more impulse into that initial jump vector. I think it might be too much though because now I'm flying. Which that could be kind of fun. You could have when you're in the air, you could even have a jetpack animation or something so that you go along with that. Now 
The stars only appear in now the first 800, so we almost need to step and have twice as many stars. That means we probably need to adjust the game logic for the bombs as well. So these are all things that will need to happen if you're going to continue with this because the stars, we just stepped them out. So they were evenly stepped on an 800 pixel wide, not a 1600 pixel wide screen. And then the bombs, when they're figuring out where to drop, on this they're checking to find out you know are you to the left or right of the middle so that means these numbers are going to have to be adjusted to deal with that fact so that we can then have the bombs truly appearing anywhere instead of only on the left half of the screen